The never-ending push to curtail freedom of speech. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel Dot Media. There are some great people across the country that have had the, the pleasure to meet, the honor to meet, since I took up this fight for free speech back in, what was it, 2007, when we started to hear about Mark Stein and Ezra Levant. One of the people that I got to meet was Barbara Kay, columnist with the National Post. And she has a, a, a new column out on, I believe it's called Bill 59, that would dramatically change freedom of speech in Quebec. Barbara Kay joins me now from Montreal. Barbara, do I have it right? Is it Bill 59? And, and what's worrisome about it? What's worrisome about it is that it, if passed, uh, would allow individuals or the Quebec Human Rights Commission itself to uh, initiate lawsuits against people that uh, they felt, or if the individual would said, oh, it, what they have written, what, the, what you have written uh, and posted, say, on your Facebook page, uh, is uh, create fear of the other, or I find offensive, or I find Islamophobic, or whatever. Uh, so this is a, a push to regulate uh, speech on the Internet, which is, by the way, a federal jurisdiction in Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, the drive is from the head of the Com Quebec Human Rights Commission. His name is Jacques Fremont. And he, uh, he is an activist and a progressive uh, who believes that the way to fight terrorism is by appeasing. Uh, he doesn't use that word, of course. Well, uh, I, I mean, this is, this is primarily being driven by people that want to make sure that Islam is not insulted, that people are not connecting Islam and terrorism, even though the people you know, carrying out the terrorist acts keep saying they're doing it in the name of Islam, they're doing it for Allah, but we're supposed to ignore that. Is, is this part of the push? I don't, in a way, I don't even think he is ignoring I think what he's saying is uh, that he's taking uh, as, as, uh, for granted that it is okay to be so offended by what you consider blasphemy or discrimination or fear or whatever, uh, that it is normal for people to translate their anger about that into acts of terror. So what he's really saying is, let's not provoke uh, these people. It's actually very insulting to Muslims to suggest that uh, if you criticize Islam or if you say, as I do sometimes, write about honor crimes and to suggest uh, that culture is at the root of these uh, killings of girls and women for their, you know, alleged impropriety, sexual impropriety. Uh, if I say that, and I do say that all the time, and if I'm posting that, and it is posted all the time on the internet, yeah. That could be a hate crime. I could be, uh, the results, if, if Bill 59 were put into uh, active use, uh, I could not only be accused and, and convicted of, of inciting to hatred, but I could be fined up to $20,000 and my name put on a list in perpetuity online, which I consider could be an incentive to somebody, you know, uh, oh, look at all the people that have published uh, hate speech in Quebec. Let's do something about them. They don't deserve to live. Uh, the, the, I mean, the, the, the bill as it is proposed is so way out there, Brian, uh, and it's kind of funny that it's only been in Quebec so far, or now it's spreading a little, that, that people are taking notice of this. Okay, so from what I understand from reading your column, it could be that even if what you say is true, it doesn't matter. Am I reading it accurately? Truth or uh, the laws of defamation, defamation, as we know them, allow for truth and um, in the public interest. If, if what I write is in the public interest, which I believe my columns say on mm -hmm. honor killings are, uh, that's, you know, if somebody tries to defame me, uh, then that's my defense. But even in the human rights, even, even in the days of Section 13 of the Human Rights uh, Commission in, in, uh, in the federal one, um, it was about hatred against groups, but Bill 59 would allow any individual to say, I'm offended. I'm personally offended by what you wrote on the internet, and uh, I want something done about it. And then, or the Quebec Human Rights Commission would allow itself to say, we think this is provocative. We don't like it. We will initiate a lawsuit. And uh, in defending his Bill 59, Jacques Fremont said that he was taking his uh, cues from uh, UN resolutions. And by UN oh. resolutions, yeah, 
he's he's taking his cue from the Organization for Islamic Cooperation. Um, and we know who those 51 states are. Is it 51? I, th I think 57. Oh, 57 <laughs> states. We know what they're all about because one of them, uh, Saudi Arabia, ha just condemned uh, a blogger who was critical of Islam uh, to 10 years in prison and a thousand lashes, Raif Badawi, whose wife lives in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Uh, that's the kind of people that he is using as his inspiration. Uh, this is radical extreme and uh, terrifying actually when you think about it even if the bill as some people think is going to be watered down in the end uh, that won't uh, that won't mean much because what uh, it means go ahead well it, it worries me because it's um, this is not just a, a Quebec thing this is a progressive thing it, the uh, Saskatchewan Human Rights Tribunal took Bill Watcott all the way to the Supreme Court and they won and the Supreme Court there even said even if what you're saying is truthful, if it can be construed as hateful, then you, know, it, it, you can't use that as a defense. So despite freedom of speech being high up there in the charter, despite it being high up there in Diefenbaker's Bill of Rights, it is still under attack on a regular basis. That's right. Uh, you know, pe some people say, well, uh, this this is going to be challenged, and the Supreme Court will strike it down because uh, but they didn't strike down the, the, the no, case that's against Wilcott. I agree with you. The internet is supposed to be a federal jurisdiction, uh, but this uh, Fremont is himself a very uh, smart and respected constitutionalist, which means he must think that he has a chance at the Supreme Court. And for the reasons you cite, that if the Supreme Court says to themselves well this will bring about a good outcome this will fight hatred they may just find a way uh... to suggest that it is a good idea and it's okay um, but uh... actually uh... this could put uh, a severe well not only censorship on on say me as an individual but what about websites that are fighting uh... islamism such as uh, point de bascule yeah. uh... which is a fantastic website and fights uh, islamism uh with meticulous um, following of the trail of, of Muslim Brotherhood jihadist types uh, and connecting all the dots and uh, that's, this material is very, oh. useless, uh, very useful to CSIS. I, I, I have um, a suspicion, Barbara, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, that uh, the ability to be offended will be limited to who you are and what you are. And, and I'll put it to you this way. Uh, earlier today, someone was tweeting at me saying, Th uh, th they said of themselves, thank God I was baptized into a Christian church that's open and tolerant or something to that effect, essentially saying that I'm not tolerant. Um, I could be offended at that and I could take them, if this law was in effect and I was in Quebec, I could take them to the Human Rights Commission, but something tells me that they would look and say, oh yes, but you don't qualify. That's right. Well, we, we already have uh, a few test cases. Uh, Marc Lebouy, who runs Point de Bascule, in 2008, uh, he tried to file a complaint, and not because he believes in speech codes or human rights commissions, he tried to file a complaint against a Salafist imam uh, who was regularly publishing and saying terrible things about Jews and homosexuals and um, inciting people to jihadism. Uh, so he took that as a complaint, and they refused to hear that case. So he proved, uh, in case there was any doubt at all, that this is a one-way street. Uh, you can you can slam just about anybody in Canada, and the human rights commissions are not interested. Be, it's only those who offend Islam uh, or, or 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 protect the, the groups that they like will get protection, and the groups that don't will not. Uh, I, I'm worried that, as you say, uh, the Supreme Court or other courts will not strike this down if it passes. And you know what happens when you give bureaucrats uh, an inch; they take a yard. Give them a yard; they'll take a mile and that this will spread across Canada. The Ontario Human Rights Commission is already on the record. They want to be able to regulate websites, including news websites. Um, they said so during Mark Stein's ordeal. So this will spread if it isn't shut down in Quebec. Oh no, I, I quite agree with you. And, and what's uh, bizarre about it is this whole notion that Canada and Quebec uh, that, that are, are teeming with uh, Islamophobic people, there. If you look at the actual numbers of of what would be considered, you know, a hate crime against Islam or you know uh, Muslims, 
the numbers just aren't there, Brian. Uh, mm -hmm. It's way, way down the list. The top, top hate crimes are still anti-Semitism, anti-gay. Uh, these always top the list. And I've seen the FBI numbers. I'm sure you have too. Um, yep. Anti-Islam activity is way, way, way down. Almost the last thing on the list. So, so this is this is a cooked up, uh, and it's a, a manipulated idea. There is no uh, Islamophobia so, to speak of. We we've swung or you've swung in Quebec from one uh, side of the pendulum to the other, and that is the uh, the Charter of Values, which uh, the the PQ put forward which would have severely limited rights on one side, and now they've swum to the other side and, and, and are come, coming forward with this. Is Premier Couillard going to back down on, on this at all? You know, I'm, I'm very shocked. I'm very shocked uh, that this came up under his, uh, under his uh, uh, rubric. Uh, he, uh, I believed that he is doing a good thing by continuing with the Liberal promise, the Liberal Party promise, to ban uh, face cover in the public sector. I think that's a great idea. For him to turn around and uh, allow this bill even to come forward as a proposal, uh, it shocks me. I, I don't know what's on his mind. And uh, what I think, uh, you know, what I'm interpreting is that he, these hearings, which have provoked a lot of criticism in the media and, and at the hearings themselves, I think what he's going to do is he's going to say, well, well, we're going we're gonna to take out some of the more draconian stuff here. We're going to water this down. But what will happen is it'll still be a bad bill, but everybody will say, oh, well, that's a relief. It could have been a lot worse. Uh, and that's what happens with these bills. But the fact that he allowed it even to come forward says something very bad about him. All right, Barbara, thanks for keeping an eye on this. We'll keep in touch with you and continue to read your columns. Thanks so much. Thank you, Brian.